All right, so suppose that we have an infinite sequence of real numbers. So I'll write this as a sub n in brackets, and if we expand that, it is brackets a1, a2, a3, a4, so on and so forth, close brackets. If we add up all of these terms, we get the series s equals a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus so on and so forth. So if the addition of all of these terms equals a real finite number, so if s is a real number, and this is a fancy way of saying s is a real number, or a shorthand way of saying that, then we say the series is convergent. And if we add up all of these numbers and we can't get a finite number or we can't evaluate what that result is going to be, we call the series divergent. So otherwise, the series is divergent. Now a more formal way of looking at it is if we call S1 equals A1, S2 equals A1 plus A2, S3 equals A1 plus A2 plus A3, and S of n, S sub n equals A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus dot 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 up to A sub n. So F sub n is the partial sum of the sequence up to term A sub n. And we put this in a sequence of its own. And we write this sequence S sub n as open bracket S1, S2, S3, so on and so forth. If each of these terms is approaching a limit, so we say if the limit as n approaches infinity of S sub n is equal to the limit S, then we say the series is convergent. So the fascinating thing is, how can we add up an infinite number of terms and get a finite result? Well, the only way that can happen is if these terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, such that these terms are approaching zero. So that means we have this theorem, theorem, if the series, so if the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the sequence a sub n, so if the series is convergent, then the limit as n approaches infinity of the term a sub n is equal to 0. So let's put a big box around this theorem. because this theorem will be the basis for the test for divergence. Now we have to be careful because this theorem doesn't necessarily work the other way around. So that is, if the limit as n approaches infinity of the term a sub n is equal to 0, the series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the terms a sub n is not, is not necessarily convergent. So just to be clear, if the series is convergent, then the terms as we go along must be going to zero. But if the terms are approaching zero, the series is not necessarily convergent. So what's going on here? Well, an example of this is the harmonic series. And the harmonic series is defined as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the term 1 over n. And if we expand that out, we get 1, or 1 over 1, plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3, 
plus 1 over 4, plus so on and so forth. So we can see as we go along that these terms are definitely getting smaller and smaller and tending towards 0. So a sub n is approaching 0. However, the harmonic series is not convergent. And we'll demonstrate how this is in an, another video. All right, so from the theorem, we get the test for divergence, which is if the limit as n approaches infinity of an infinite sequence of terms a sub n is not equal to zero or does not exist, then the series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of the terms a sub n is divergent. So let's put a box around this as well. And with that, let's do a few example exercises. So in each of the following, we're going to determine if the series is convergent or divergent. And if it is convergent, we're going to find the sum. So for the first one, we have the series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 times n. Uh, well, this one we can simply write as equal to a half. The constant half can come out the front, and we write that, and we rewrite it as a half of the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the terms 1 on n. And we can see straight away that this here is the harmonic series which we stated before is divergent so being a divergent series the sum doesn't approach a limit so half of something that doesn't approach a limit is still going to be a divergent series for exercise two let's have a look at the sum from k equals two to infinity of k squared divided by k squared minus 1. For this one, we can do a little bit of algebraic manipulation of the terms here. So if I divide both the top and bottom by k squared, so the numerator is divided by k squared, and the denominator is divided by k squared, and we write the sum notation still at the front, k squared on k squared cancels to equal 1. And the denominator term I can separate out into its components k squared on k squared minus 1 on k squared. The first one cancels down to 1 and we are left with the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over 1 minus k squared. So by the test for divergence Let's call this a sub k. We can use the test for divergence where we take the limit from k to infinity of a sub k, which equals the limit from k to infinity of 1 over 1 minus 1 on k squared, which by inspection, this term goes to 0 if we take the limit to infinity. So we have 1 over 1 minus 0, and of course 1 on 1 is equal to 1. However, this does not equal 0, which is what the test for divergence requires. So therefore, this series is divergent as well. For exercise 3, let's look at the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 plus 2 to the power of n over 3 to the power of n. Let's just take the term a sub n equals 1 plus 2 to the power of n on 3 to the power of n and write this as, if we separate out the fraction, we can write that as 1 on 3 to the power of n 
plus 2 to the power of n on 3 to the power of n, which equals, we can leave the first term if we want, the second term we can write as 2 thirds to the power of n. So now the test for divergence, if we take the limit from n to infinity of a sub n, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 on 3 to the power of n plus 2 thirds to the power of n. And we can separate this into two limits. So the limit from n to infinity, sorry this should be infinity, of 1 on 3 to the power of n plus the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 thirds to the power of n. The first limit goes to 0. The second limit also goes to 0. So therefore the limit of the terms is equal to 0. So this series might be convergent. Let's see if it is so. So we can rewrite the series as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 on 3 to the power of n plus 2 on 3 to the power of n. And we can write this out as two separate sums. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 on 3 to the power of n plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 thirds to the power of n. The first sum happens to be a geometric series with the first term being a equals 1 third and the common ratio being 1 third. So the sum of this geometric series, let's call it s sub 1 equals, the rule for finding the sum is a on 1 minus r which equals 1 third on 1 minus 1 third and that goes to 1 third on 2 thirds which equals a half. The second sum also turns out to be a geometric series. The first term a equals 2 thirds and the common ratio r equals 2 thirds. So the sum of this geometric series, let's call it s sub 2 equals also equals a on 1 minus r and we sub the values in which is 2 thirds on 1 minus 2 thirds which goes to 2 thirds on 1 third which equals 2. So the line above equals the first sum is a half plus the second sum being 2 so the total sum is 2 and a half. And if you need a recap on geometric series, I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner here, or it'll be in the description below. But that will do it for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Like, subscribe and share with your classmates. And we'll be back soon on the next video.